Good morning. Now, this is what I call a hotel with a view. I mean, just look at it. It's black, it's shiny. The panniers look great on it, and the tank bag suits it as well. It's just amazing. The view out there isn't bad either. Have a look at this. And that's where I'm headed today. I'm heading over to Inner Sharon. I shall explain all um, about the name. Uh, so I think first things first, we uh, will clean the colony of flies uh, that I killed on the way over here late last night off the windscreen and then um, get everything sorted. Everything's charged battery wise, drones all good to go. I'm all good to go. So what am I waiting for? Come on, <laughs> let's head. Welcome on board, everybody. Oh, it's so good to be away. This is my first little trip this year. And uh, I'm recording this in uh, mid-April, so <laughs> long overdue. It's just, I mean, you can just feel everything relaxing inside you. Well, I can anyway. Um, so it's great to have you along for the next few days. Um, I just can't wait to see what the, the road turns up in front of me. Um, it's a special place this as you saw um, it's called uh, Inner Sharon now um, I did a video to sort of uh, promote this uh, little tour so if you haven't already watched that uh, do yourself a favor and go and watch that because that'll sort of set up the framework for what lies ahead over the next couple of days Inner Sharon of course is uh, derived from the, the film the uh, famous Irish film um, Banshees of Inner Sharon um, it, it was nominated for nine Oscars, I believe. Yeah, it was nine Oscars. Unfortunately, it didn't win one, but uh, it did. It did win three Golden Globes, and it's a film which has sort of divided the nation as well. Um, love or hate it. Um, I was in the bracket, which uh, loved it. Um, so uh, that's another thing. Uh, if you haven't already watched it watch that as well and then you'll spot a lot of things in the film which hopefully I'll see today because it was filmed on Inner Sharon. Now I'm gonna give you a bit of a spoiler already. Um, the place I'm going to isn't actually called Inner Sharon. It's a made-up name just for the film. Uh, it is of course um, Ackle Island for those of you who do know this part of the world and uh, I've been to Ackle a few times um, mainly in a working capacity so I've never actually had the the joy of touring around but I mean look at this scenery this is unbelievable welcome to the west of Ireland we're on the wild Atlantic way um, we're not actually on Ackle yet um, it's connected to the mainland via a, a bridge so very soon we'll be heading over that it's the uh, it's the largest of uh, islands islands <laughs> if you can make sense of that good man yourself that's his morning exercise. And this is the uh, the bridge which connects Ackle Island to the mainland. Look at this view. Look at the weather. Blessed. I've made it. I'm here. I'm going to enjoy the next few days. Um, so yeah, first stop is Grace O'Malley's castle where she lived. If you don't know who she is, she was the pirate queen of Ireland. 
I'll explain more when we get there, but uh, first of all, we're taking a left down here. I really love this time of year. For those of you who watched my uh, Connemara series last year, do you know what I love so much is the yellow gorse, you see? The yellow gorse is everywhere, and uh, it's not just the sight of it, which reminds me of postcards when I was a kid, uh, for some reason. <laughs> Strange how uh, things sort of transport you back in time. But the yellow gorse is one of the things which does it for me. And the smell of it, which you can't get really in a car, but on a motorbike, of course. Um, of course. Aha! <laughs> so I'm cracking the dad jokes already. My God. Um, but yeah, the smell of it is just wonderful. Look at this. <laughs> I've got to refrain from stopping every 200 yards taking photographs or sending the drone up because there's going to be plenty of this to see, I'm sure. It's a lot more populated than I thought it was going to be. There's loads of houses here. I wonder if there, there are actually people who live here all year round or whether they're sort of holiday cottages. I would suspect the latter, to be honest. Mind you, they all look populated now, and it's not really holiday season. Imagine that back in the day, that little cottage there. Ah, now, folks, if you were ever <laughs> wanting to be buried somewhere, <laughs> I'll stand up, try and get a better look at this. <laughs> now, if Carlsberg did graveyards, that wouldn't be a a bad place to be laid to rest, would it? Oh yeah. Okay, it looks like I'm going to have to watch out for the sheep today. And the little baby lambs. Actually, Ackle Island has the largest, or the third largest sea cliffs in Europe. Now, that's obviously not them, um, but uh, it just got me thinking about the sea cliffs, so hopefully we'll see the, the cliffs today. And uh, they're actually three times higher than the cliffs of Moor. And if you've been to Ireland, you're bound to have uh, been to the cliffs of Moor. I believe the cliffs of Moor are one of the, um, are on the list of uh, 12 wonders of the world, or must-see sites or something like that. I'm sorry, I'm going to have to go back and have a little look at that uh, sculpture see what that's about so a quick u-turn i have to go back and see what this is about you know what i'm like folks about me uh, roadside sculptures this looked like a, a figure of a boxer so all shall be revealed while well, i'm right it is a figure of a boxer johnny kilban world featherweight boxing champion who lived on Ackle Island, I presume, yeah. Ackle Island to Cleveland, did he emigrate? 1912 to 1923. Well, that surely isn't his age, because then he would have only been 11. So um, maybe he, he lived on Ackle Island between 1912 to 1923. Good man, Johnny. Good man yourself. You look a mighty fine, fit fella. I wouldn't I wouldn't like a smack in the face off you. planning goes into even getting a few days away like this and uh, the biggest part of the planning is always the weather because it's pointless coming over if it's going to be lashing down. Uh, one, it would uh, make me very uncomfortable soaking wet for a few days riding around on a bike but two, it, would, uh, it wouldn't it would make for very nice viewing would it? I mean look at this, there's the, the Irish tricolour again because I'd nearly forgotten I was still in Ireland. <laughs>
whenever I'm over on the west coast of Ireland especially, I always feel like I'm travelling back in time. And you can see why I feel like that. When you get into the real rural parts of it, it's very unspoilt, untouched. And here it is. This looks like uh, Grace O'Malley's Tower House, as it's referred to. Okay, we'll just uh, pull in here and uh, probably send the drone up and tell you a little bit about it. No. Grace was born at Belcare Castle near Westport, but during her reign she acquired several other castles, including this one called Kildavnet. She was born in 1530 when King Henry VIII was King of England. Rebellious from an early age, O'Malley, as a young girl, wished to go on a trading expedition to Spain with her father. Upon being told she couldn't because her long hair would catch in the ship's ropes, she then cut most of it off to shame her father into taking her. This earned her the nickname Grania Whale, from the Irish word whale, meaning bald or having cropped hair. When her father died, Grace became Queen of Umal, chieftain of the O'Malley clan, taking over the trading empire and striking into the lucrative business of piracy. Other pirates were not her only enemy, however. The British were still making strong incursions, and Grace spent much of her life protecting her native land and its people from their ever-encroaching rule. According to local legend, she slept at night with the rope of a boat tied to her big toe, ever ready for battle. However, the Brits won this one led by Sir Richard Bingham, who seized everything she owned, even her son. Then, in a desperate plea to get her belongings back, she set sail on her most daring voyage yet, to England and up the Thames, where she was to plead her case with Queen Elizabeth I. So impressed was the Queen of England that she ordered Bingham to return everything he had taken from Grace and also to allow her to continue her career on land and sea. The Tudor Queen and the Pirate Queen, two powerful women in worlds dominated by men, had reached an understanding that was to last both their lifetimes. Hope you enjoyed that uh, little history lesson there, folks. I'd uh, finished flying the drone. I was Googling to see how many people uh, live on Ackle Island. And uh, according to Google, there are currently 2,600 people living on Ackle Island. 87% of the island, by the way, is uh, bog, peat bog, turf. That's why that wonderful smell of turf, uh, like I've caught it a few times already this morning. That's one, just one of the gazillions of things I love about Ireland. See that place over there on like the other side of the bay? <laughs> you know, as much as I love coming to places like this and making these little video videos, I'm sure it uh, unsettles me somewhat as well. <laughs> Here we go. There's the Atlantic. Next stop, America.
get off the bike and sit and admire everything. I've often got home with a load of footage on the camera and then thought to myself, why didn't I just take a few minutes there, you know, and sit and enjoy everything I'm capturing on the camera. Story of my life, really. <laughs>